echo the call of Zaina Anwar and Sisters in Islam and, and the women's group. Why is there this obsession by uh, religious leaders to control people's lives? You know, what they wear, what they eat, where they go, how they exercise. Seriously, you know, how can yoga, you know, which brings you peace of mind and makes you stronger spiritually and makes you stronger physically so that you're a better person, you know, you, that you, you, know you, you would in fact function better in a very stressful world. The fact that I'm wearing a pair of jeans and prefer to have short hair, who to say this is a boyish attire and this is not girlish enough, you know? I mean, short hair, short hair, it's, it's a choice that you have. So again, I think it's very easy to go and pick on women, you know, go and pick on women and, and, and try and control their lives. Um, I think it makes us look really foolish. It makes our country become a laughing stock. I remember the time once they said, oh, you can't even be wearing tights and tight-fitting uh, clothes to do uh, aerobics. So we have to remember all of this has got nothing to do with morals. It's all about control. It's about I want to control you. And whoever came up with this fatwa, the religious leaders, the politicians who say yes to this, they are trying to control the community and control the society. You know, it's like having a big bat and saying, I want to control your life. And for someone like me who can, who has been working on the issue of domestic violence, where a husband is constantly trying to control your wife, I see this as the batterer, you know. This fatwa is like a batterer. Control, control, control. I mean, surely a man who takes on the second wife will have his finances being divided over two families. And surely the first wife will then have her quality of life and her children's quality of life will come lower. You know, um, I think this is a very protectionist attitude. It, it implies that somehow women who are single and husbandless need to be protected and need to be rescued. I find that offensive. I really find that offensive. I think, again, it's about, it's about choices. And I like to know you know, whether or not by taking on a second wife, is that second wife being well looked after, is the first wife being left, looked after, you are financially burdening this man with two families, you know. Um, the thousand dollars is only one, a one-off payment. The thousand ringgit will just be enough for the wedding or, or less, and that's it. Uh, I, I find this really offensive, and I really find this foolish, and if not, uh, uh, you know, ill-thought. Because what women want is sustainable income. They want to have uh, some dignity. Do not look at women as if we need to be rescued by men. If somehow, if I have a husband, all my problems are solved. Perhaps your problems are just beginning. You know? but first of all, you need to deal with the first wife, their children, your children. It's, 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 it's really, it's quite, uh, it's, it's, it's almost humiliating when you, when, you, when you go out there and say, marry a woman and we'll give you money. I think it's extremely important when I said that the only way politicians and our law makers are going to listen and change the laws and reform the laws so that they are kinder and they are more just is when Malaysians speak up. And I mean all Malaysians, including Malaysians who may be of another faith. So someone like me. I should feel free to talk about the impact of Islam on women's lives. All my life, for the 26 years, I've worked for women's rights. I've never said, I am working only for women's rights of Hindus and Christians. I work for the rights of all women in Malaysia. So it's a very sad day that today we have one ministry that looks after rights of women who are non-Muslim, and then you have a secretariat that only looks after the rights of Muslim women. And, you know, someone like me or women's rights activists are not invited to the Muslim secretariat. Okay, I think instead of bringing people together, we're becoming more divisive.